don't have time to quarantine people. They've, they've got to get them, pass them through as quickly as they can and send them on into the interior. But the funny thing is, though, is, is President Obama set aside $2 billion for this. But we have, they have more. no money. Yeah, they're asking for more. But they have no money to take care of this stuff. They have no money to get the CDC out there. And that's a whole other issue. They don't even care anything about what's going on down there. But you would think we would have the money with $2 billion to be able to take care of this stuff. Where is that money going? Now, John, you actually reported on some of these border towns or towns close to the border that are, are actually being bankrupt from having to house and take care of all the, of these illegals. Meanwhile, they're getting absolutely no help from the federal government, which created this. Well, yeah, they're actually, it's not so much housing as it is burying them in their local cemeteries because there's just so many of them that die from dehydration and wild animals uh, killing them, basically, and then other causes. There are... There are Women that are coming up now pushed by Jay Johnson to get up here. Young girls that are being raped repeatedly on the way up and then killed when they get here. And the, the, to understand what's actually going on, you have to understand that what I keep repeating is the funnel effect where the border crossing, where the border stations are, the coyotes bring them up and then they have to go around that. So they have to go through people's land. And uh, it just all depends on... Uh, how hospitable that land is. That and, landowner, right. Right. So uh, as far as these towns, Falfurious, we spoke with the county judge, and uh, he reported that uh, the year before they spent $800,000 just burying, d dealing with all the uh, things they deal with with the uh, illegals. But you go to that town, and it's completely broke. I mean, mm -hmm. it, uh, Detroit's bad, but Falfurious is pretty bad, too. And it's just amazing to see that and to be there and witness it and realize that this is coming to the rest of America. This isn't right. fear mongering. This is about being smart and realizing that this is coming. Right. And, and we all have to get together. We have to do something now because this is a hyper activity that the administration is pushing as soon as they can. Well, let's watch a clip from that report. It was the loss of oil and gas revenue, compounded by the amount that we spend. And that, that figure is de dealing with autopsies, it's dealing with wear and tear of the vehicles, the sheriff department, the JPs, the magistrates, the death certificates, all the, the paperwork that's entailed, getting out to these areas that are very, very remote. I personally have been taken to pronounce a body when the, police, the sheriff officer with me says, oh, there went the transmission. And we had to call a record to come get us. Thank God for Border Patrol. They were able to take us to where uh, the immigrant was. And a lot of these immigrants are dying of dehydration. Is that the main cause? Uh, we refer to them as the elements. You know, it's compounded by the 100 plus weather degrees out there, rattlesnake bites. And a lot of them we order autopsies because we don't know uh, what was the cause of death. We now do autopsies on everybody and DNA on everybody. All these expenses, you know, uh, we don't budget for. And we've had to, and the law says we have to pay for them. And ha have you asked for grants from the federal government? We have gotten nothing from the federal government. Uh, Governor Perry's office uh, last year stepped up to the plate and they helped us with $150,000 to the sheriff. We were in Austin, Texas this week and they're going to help us with another 150000 That's to defray a lot of the costs that the sheriff department has. There was a boom time with the gas and oil and the creameries. In 2007 when I took office, our taxable value was one million, one billion ninety-three million. Last year was five hundred and forty-one million. We've lost more than sixty percent of our oil and gas. So that that makes you know, and we live by oil and gas. In 1959, we were the only one in South Texas that had an all-concrete stadium. Mm -hmm. We had four dealerships and we had a hospital. Are you aware of the administration of Obama, how they're professing to the Central American countries that if you come across the border and proclaim that you're a dreamer, uh, especially these younger kids that are coming across, that you will receive amnesty. Uh, I think that you can't uh, make the rules just to, uh, to apply them. If you're gonna be fair, let's be fair to everybody. You know, if you're gonna allow people to come in, you should have standards, you should have a program in play that would allow them to enter the country legally, not illegally. Wow, John, so it looks like we are seeing the typical cloward piven strategy collapsing America under the weight of a welfare state. There you can get more people on welfare, you can shore up the Democratic voter base, and then you can create sort of a national solution 
to yeah, this the, uh, Hunger Games Society. Well, yeah, the national solution, according to Cloward and Piven, is a guaranteed annual income. Mm -hmm. So their strategy was based off of the 1965 Watts riots, and they saw the tension that was created by that in the country, so they realized the only way to get the poor what they want, which is basically, i.e., socialism, because socialism works great until they run out of your money, right? Mm -hmm. Is to scare the pants off of the entire country and our culture and bring us into, through fear, bring a welfare state that the rest of us can agree upon. Well, that's never going to happen because this is a capitalist society. There are people that live on all levels of wealth and mm -hmm. of poverty, and that's the American way. Their guaranteed income is never going to work, and it's actually a strategy that uh, is, has a lot of liberal leanings that we are now dealing with. Right. And once again, how are we going to pay for all of this? We have elected officials that aren't even allowed to enter these facilities. We have a representative in Oklahoma. He was told that he needed to make an appointment for three weeks away if he wanted to get inside the facility. It was uh, Jim Bridenstine, Republican out of Oklahoma. And he's basically wants to know, what are they trying to hide? Is there some child trafficking, yeah, human trafficking are, going on? Right. You mean, know? At least they're getting denied as well, too. I don't feel so bad. Right, but these, are people that, <laughs> these are people that are supposed to be, you know, looking out for us and saying what's going on inside of this federal facility. Yeah, well. And, Jakari, I mean, you actually witnessed firsthand where our taxpayer dollars are going. Yeah, it was very surprising to me. We went to McAllen, Texas, and we talked to the emergency manager. And we were having a conversation. He says, yeah, they're paying for their bus tickets. I said, who's paying for the bus tickets? He was like, the Border Patrol. I was like, really? Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is some very interesting information you're giving me here. Right. Because you think about an agency who is supposed to be housing these people, uh, you know, prior to their, uh, to their court dates. But what they're doing is they say, hey, here's your order to appear in court, and here's your bus ticket to anywhere in the continental United States. So which is, to say if, uh, which is to say if these guys go all the way up to Maine or if these guys go all the way up to Washington State, do you really expect them to drive all the way to South Texas just to get deported? To of course they don't. Absolutely, and that's a problem we've, we've always had, and now the Border Patrol is strained as it is. I mean, yeah, right, they're going to get lost in the court system. Well, that's what they do, though. Half of them don't even show up to, to, their, to their court dates at all whatsoever. Exactly. It's actually 90%. And Jakari, you were actually able to speak to some of these representatives before all of the people at the border facilities were given the directive to keep their mouths shut. We have the medical staff being told, keep your mouth shut or you're going to be arrested. John, don't you think that the taxpayers deserve to know the dangers that are we're risking here? There's all kinds of contagious diseases floating around these border facilities. Well, I hope everybody's paying attention because the folks that I spoke with, Dr. Mike Vickers and his wife, Linda Vickers, uh, who also operate a uh, volunteer organization that deals with illegals coming onto their land. He's also a veterinarian and very knowledgeable about all the diseases in that area that they've dealt with over the decades. Well, let's watch that report. Well, these people are bringing tens of thousands of larvae on their clothing into Texas whenever they go down to the riverbank and uh, brush up against that uh, Carrizo cane and uh, all the property they go through, uh, these larvae are dropped off. Uh, the larvae then get on, on a plant and then get on our white-tailed deer. Consequently, there's a tick zone that runs all the way from uh, Del Rio to Brownsville, and, and the uh, USDA and the Animal Health Commission have tick riders that try to catch this livestock uh, coming across the river and, and get it caught. So people, though, uh, uh, are still coming, and there's been some uh, properties that uh, have come into quarantine uh, miles off the river uh, that even had high fences where the livestock and the deer could not infect it. Uh, they were affected beca because of the human trafficking and the, and the people coming through uh, bringing those larvae. So uh, another disease, pyroplasmosis uh, transmitted by a tick. We actually, uh, I personally feel like uh, that tick showed up, that infected tick showed up. Uh, coming in on people's clothing out of Mexico. Uh, hoof and mouth disease is on the horizon. A lot of these people are coming from countries that have hoof and mouth disease, and that would be devastating for the United States livestock industry if hoof and mouth disease shows up in the United States. And it's a big concern because a lot of these people that are sneaking in here could have that virus on their tennis shoes. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge concern for us. 
um, it, it would be absolutely devastating to, to the United States agriculture industry if that if that disease shows up. And there's a, a multiplicity of other diseases. Most recent swine flu. flu. Uh, this swine flu can be transmitted from people to the swine industry. Not only are humans and drugs being smuggled in, but horses and cattle are being smuggled in, especially in the Trans-Pecos area where there's not a big presence of Animal Health Commission uh, people, inspectors, uh, USDA, and even Border Patrol. So uh, uh, most recent, within the past couple of years, there's been diseased animals come through our Trans-Pecos. Horses being brought in with pyroplasmosis out of Mexico, and uh, cattle being brought in to be sold at markets in Texas that are Mexican origin cattle that actually have brucellosis and uh, that's affecting our, our, that could affect our brucellosis free status here in Texas down the road if it's not contained and, and stopped. Nothing to worry about there, right? I mean, now you spoke with the CDC earlier this week, Joe. What did they have to say? What are they doing to help this? Well, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to the CDC was that last week I spoke to Stu Harrison in El Paso, Texas. He's the vice president of the Border Patrol Union in that area. And he said that he personally tried to contact them and said, hey, there's a situation going down here across the border you might be interested in, and told them about the different diseases that were coming through. And then I started thinking, I said, well, you said that there are, there's already a screening process for these kids coming through, so who's doing it? He said, basic EMT guys. Hmm. So that was the scariest thing. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to call CDC myself. So I called him, and the lady got on there and said it's not even part of our scope of practice, that all we're responsible for doing is training the boots on ground, basically, and giving them the proper guidance they need to do that job. But then I said, okay, are you actually talking to the Border Patrol? Are you helping them? Are you giving them the knowledge they need? She said no. Wow. So we have a potential outbreak here, and the CDC isn't even around. Let's take a look at that. They are calling in regards to the unaccompanied persons that are uh, coming into the United States. Yes, the, the, about the 96,000 that have come in the past month, yes. And you want to know what the CDC is doing in regards to this information, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. The vice president of the Border Patrol Union, who is over these guys, said he has just contacted you guys, and you said it is not an issue for you to worry about. So they might be on call, but they're not going down there and taking care of the issues. Right now, Border Patrol agents are testing positive for tuberculosis, scabies, and pox. I definitely understand your concerns um, at this time. If you have additional questions in regards to this topic, um, I would have to escalate this information, or you can go on to the cdc.gov website and um, ask your inquiry on the website, and they will respond by email. Uh, but this topic is out of scope for myself and the CDC info. Um, they do not provide any additional information other than that. Uh, well, who, who's going to go down to the border? When is this, when is this going to happen? Because right, 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 now, right now, basic EMTs are supposedly screening these kids, which means they're getting past our borders, and they've made it to Lackland Air Force Base, which is in San Antonio, and there's a swine flu outbreak. There's no one here that could speak to you about this information. Why, not, that, why not? That's your job. It is out of scope for the CDC info. You are speaking to CDC info, not CDC. Is there a number I can call to talk to somebody? No, sir. We do not have information in regards to that. So there's no way that I can report a an outbreak. I have to go to a website and hope that someone gets to it in time. If you'd like to report an outbreak, you can report that to the state or local health department. But it's not the CDC's problem. It's not something that the CDC regulates. So what is it that you guys do then? Since you don't go down to border situations where there's a crisis, where kids are coming over and bringing these uh, viruses like MRSA and things like that into our country, since that's not an issue that you guys take care of, what is it that the CDC actually does then? Well, the role of CDC info is to provide general health information in regards to health risks. In the world, we provide reliable, consistent, science-based health information on behalf of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Are you guys, provi are are you guys providing information to the Border Patrol then to help them? I've already stated that we are not. Okay, thank you. And so it's not just contagious diseases that we have to worry about. Uh, we're also witnessing the overrunning of our country, but we're also witnessing the rollout of the domestic security force. Now, the medical staff inside Lackland Air Force Base 
said that they were threatened with arrest by a government-contracted security force. And they say that this security force is from the Baptist family.